Hello everyone, in this tutorial or maybe even a series of tutorials I would like to show you how you can use MariaDB for storage as well as Dapper for easier data access with a basic ASP.NET Web API project written in C Sharp. So in this video, which is like part one of this tutorial, I'm going to be dealing with the database layer. So let's just go to the terminal here and let's open up our uh, database. If you want some instructions on how to install it on um, Linux, Mint or Ubuntu or how to install uh, dbver on Linux as well, you can check out my previous tutorials. But assuming you have everything up and running on Windows as well, you should probably be able to follow the same steps and get the same result. And of course you have to have your service uh, active, it has to be running. Okay, so uh, let's see what databases we have already. So it's just the default databases that come like pre-installed with uh, MariaDB. So let's just create a new database called DB1. So let's see what we have now. DB1 is there. And we're going to also create, we're also going to create a user for the purposes of this specific project. Uh, so I'm going to say grant all privileges basically on DB1. So everything that is inside that database, like all the tables. Um, so this user will have like all privileges on this specific database. So this is where we're going to type in the name. So let's say web API identified by, and here comes the password. So super strong password. Of course, you wouldn't use it like like in a real project, but this is just for demonstrations, demonstration purposes. So let's see if we have that user now. So select user from MySQL user. As you can see, the user is right there. And I think that's it for the terminal part. And of course, you, you could try to do the rest uh, using the terminal as well, but um, it's probably going to be easier to use some database clients such as dbver. So that's what I'm going to use. And we're going to create a new database connection. We're going to connect to MariaDB. So let's hit next. And our database is called db1. The name of the user is web API. And the password is super strong password. And assuming I've tapped it in correctly, we should be good to go. So let's just click finish. We have this database here. And um, inside the database, well, it's, it's kind of empty. We're going to create a new table. So the name of the table, let's call it um, items new column first it's going the first one is going to be an id column so an integer not null the next column let's call it name varchar 100 is okay and also like one more column quantity going to be an integer as well and the default value will be one all right so we have it there let's go to constraints and let's add a new one a primary key for the id column so okay 
Now if we click save, you should be able to see this code generated for you. So it looks about right and we can click persist to persist the changes in the database. As you can see, the columns are here and you could actually add rows, you know, like one by one, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and try to create some stored procedures that will enable us to interact with the data inside the table. So maybe in this case, it's a bit of an overkill because this case is not very complex, but you know, I think especially in a, in more advanced scenarios it may be advisable to actually do that to create some stored procedures that were that will interface with your application logic so you basically won't have to change much within your application itself within your application code base uh, or your web api in this case uh, you can just modify the sort procedure internally and it, the changes will be reflected without you having to like recompile your project. So that's definitely a plus. And, you know, stored procedures tend to be faster as well. So if performance is, is vital in your application, in your, you know, in your um, backend, basically, on your backend, then it's also something to consider. So we're going to say create new procedure. You could also go to this folder right here. But the container by default is going to be DB1. And we're going to say SP, which stands for stored procedure and save item. So this is going to be basically like an uh, like an absurd statement so what it does is it's gonna try to insert an item but if it already exists it will just update it so um, we're gonna need actually like three parameters each for one column here so all of them are input parameters so we're gonna specify that by including um, the in keyword so id int and then we have uh, n name, which is var char 100. And then we also have quantity, which is an int. So this is where we actually gonna define what happens inside that procedure. So we're gonna say insert into db1 items values and it's going to be id name and quantity but if the item already exists we're going to say on duplicate key update we're going to say name equals name and quantity equals quantity. So let's go ahead and click save. And it's going to insert the, like, or replace the delimiter for us. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to hit persist. And let's test it. So you're going to say call sp save item so here we're gonna say one let's say maybe book and 10 of them so we're gonna execute that statement the number of updated rows is one and hopefully if we re refresh the table we're gonna see it here so as you can notice it's there and we could update it as well using that same procedure. So we're going to say execute statement and now we see updated rows too. So that's how you can distinguish between whether it's been updated of or if it's like inserted for the 
insert it for the first time. So if it's one, then it means it wasn't there. If it's two, then it means it was there, but it's been updated. Okay, so maybe let's just add maybe like something like pen, maybe 50 of them. So as you can see it there. So now maybe pencil. Maybe 150. Okay, so we have like three items there. Looks good so far. So let's just create some basic procedures for like maybe getting some data from the table. So let's say sp get item. Okay, uh, we're gonna take one parameter here. It's gonna be the id, which is an integer. So select, this is uh, select everything. from db1 items can give an alias to this table let's call it t where t id is equal to id so this is to this is to help us like differentiate between the name of the column here and the actual parameter so it's always safer to do that and sometimes it may not even work as expected especially when it you know comes to like delete statements then it's very risky not to include that so let's try to save it and persist it so now I'm gonna say call as we get item so let's get item number two so as you can see we get the item called pen all right so far so good let's add a new procedure sp get items so all of them So no parameters this time. So select basically everything from DB1 items. Let's hit save and persist. And let's test it right away. Call SP get items. As you can see, when we execute it, it shows us the um, all the items, all three of them. So it works. And now finally, a delete procedure. So sp delete item. Okay. And we're going to specify the ID here. begin delete t from uh, db1 items st and this is actually very important here so i'm going to say t id equals id if you were not if you didn't specify this alias here um, this would probably be treated as always true if you were just to say id equals id and then you would get all of your items deleted inside that table so make sure you do it correctly so save persist and let's try the last one here so we're going to say call 
sp delete item and maybe let's say the second one as well hopefully it works and yeah i think it did so as you can see it deleted the second item and now we have only two so there you go i think that's it for now we went through the database part and yeah um, hopefully in the next time we can do the uh, part where we actually write the write the code in or in c sharp so uh, until then have a great day or night <laughs> depending on what time it is where you're watching and take care and see you bye